So we're here to talk today about how your investment strategy really changes as you approach retirement. Or maybe should or may need to change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, so I think the crux of it would, would be, Chase, is this idea that a lot of folks have never heard before, right? Mm -hmm. This might be the first time you're hearing this idea that you can separate your financial life into two parts, can't you? Yep. What we, one, we call the accumulation phase, and I usually put the accumulation phase starting at age 16 when you get your first lifeguarding job. Oh, yeah. Are you a lifeguard? Oh, first, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Me too. First mm -hmm. lifeguarding job. So I know your dad was a lifeguard <laughs> too. It runs in the family. Huh? Yep. First lifeguarding job, you start making money, and mm -hmm. hopefully you're saving some. You start accumulating wealth. Yeah. Well, why are we doing it? We're accumulating it for retirement, aren't we? Right? So you have this accumulation phase that runs from roughly 16 to usually about five years, five to seven years before mm -hmm. retirement. Yep. So usually 55 to 60, depending on when you're going to retire. That's your accumulation phase. And then you move into what we call the distribution phase. So yeah. So when we're entering that distribution phase, and this is... Um, uh, a line that we like to use here at the office, really all the rules for investing change. So now instead of, as you said, Dave, this accumulation phase, where really the rules for everyone are the same. Put in as much as you can, look for investments that are going to grow your bucket as big as possible, right? Over time. Over time. Right. And don't touch the money. Exactly. Exactly. So that accumulation phase, we would argue that the rules or the, the goals for everyone are the same, aren't they? Exactly. Right. Again, I would have reiterate but the goals for someone in the accumulation are put in as much as you can mm -hmm. don't touch the money yep. and look for investments usually mutual funds and mm -hmm. inside your 401ks your IRAs to give you the best overall rate of return over long periods of time and grow your bucket as big as possible for retirement now we move to the distribution phase and what's different well in the distribution phase now for the first time you will be distributing your money and you yep. will be distributing it over the rest of your life. And exactly. like it or not, you can ask the pharaohs, right? You can't take it with you. <laughs> so this is a concept that folks need to get their head around, isn't it? This idea that every penny that you have saved will be distributed. Yeah. And really folks, they'll come to us and especially with the area that we're in and say, well, you know, Dave, I have a pension. I have my social security yeah. check. I don't even think I'm going to touch my 401k which is certainly a good place to be in, right? Well, really, even then, um, you're still gonna distribute the money. As our uh, audience may not know, uh, at 72, you have to take money out of these accounts. The required minimum distribution. Exactly. Called RMDs, people hear the term RMDs, that's mm -hmm. required minimum distributions. But you know, if you keep an eye out for our YouTube channel, we will actually do some specific YouTubes on some of these topics like required minimum distributions. Mm -hmm. So not only will you have to take money then, right, at 72, the government requires it, but if uh, this bucket ends up growing and you never end up taking it, well, you know, eventually it will be passed on to your heirs at some point. So every penny will be distributed. And yeah, that is a distribution in itself. Exactly. It? Right? Exactly. Money going to your heirs will be distributed. Mm -hmm. It has tax consequences. Certainly. Right? If it, Very different ones depending on how you structure your investments. Right? Absolutely. So you can have the, two people can have the exact same investments. And the amount their heirs inherit can be dramatically different. And the only difference would be how they structure the, the account that holds it. Yep. Right? Huge difference. Absolutely. And really, uh, when we're talking about this distribution phase, folks come to us and they think, well, that's when I retire, is the comment that we normally get is, I'll start thinking about that once I retire. And what folks don't really know is, and this is a buzzword in our industry, is what's called the retirement red zone. And really what that is, is that five to seven years before retirement and that five to seven years after you retire are really the most critical years uh, when it comes to your investment and you, when it comes to your distribution phase. Yeah, by critical, what we mean is, is that imagine a major loss, a stock market crash and your portfolios go down. Mm -hmm. Mathematically, and this is kind of the math geek with mm -hmm. us, right? Mathematically, a loss of your savings in that 10 to 14 year window, this retirement red zone will affect you negatively. And by negatively, that's a fancy way to say your chance of running out of money, yep. right? Will affect you negatively more if that loss happens in that 10 to 14 year window than if it happened in any other time in your life from 16 to age 95. Yep. So we've got to be super careful 
to get this right all the time, but specifically, we want to get your investment strategy right in this 10 to 14 year window, five to seven years before retirement, and then the first five to seven years of retirement. Yep, and really, this whole concept of moving from this accumulation phase to this distribution phase, and we've talked about it on our channel briefly before, but for Dave and I, that, that really hits home for us. And the reason for that is, is um, our, uh, well, my grandfather, um, you know, was specifically affected by this retirement red zone. Um, his retirement plan, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, didn't really work because he didn't account for this retirement red zone. Yeah, I think a better way to say it, and this might hit home with a lot of the folks listening today, mm -hmm. is the reality is he didn't realize it, but by default, he didn't have a plan. Right. Right. He just assumed everything would work out. He had right. some money in stocks, some in bonds, he had right. equity in his house and just assumed it was all gonna work out, but it didn't work out. Right. It, uh, my mom, his wife, your grandmother died early. He didn't plan on that. Right. And the timing, we talked about with the timing in that retirement red zone, he took a market hit at the worst possible time in his life, yep. and as a result, quickly ran out of money. So that's a great example of how that can work to your disadvantage. So how do we distribute what are the just we talk about distributing money chase mm -hmm. how are the different ways that someone in retirement is going to have to distribute their money over their lifetime yeah so the first way is let's say you need some extra money for income in retirement let's say a thousand dollars a month as an example yeah, right so you've got social security in retirement right. some of you are going to have a pension and that right. may be enough to cover the bills mm -hmm. but for many people it's not or if exactly. you don't have a pension or enough right. pensions well, the whole reason most of us have been saving for retirement is we want to use the money in retirement, whether it's paying an electric bill or paying for a vacation and fund money. So right. one way we're going to distribute it is could be monthly checks coming out every month to pay the bills for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Well, how much money do I need? Well, the easy answer is tell me how long you're going to live. If I knew your date of death, right. it would be very easy to calculate how much money to save and and where to put it, but that's the rub, isn't it? It is. We don't know how long, so we want to ideally build a plan so you can take as much as possible out to enjoy life to right. the fullest, Right. yet if you're lucky enough to live to your late 80s or 90s like your great-grandmother, my grandmother, right. right, that we don't run out of money. Exactly. And there's ways to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to know that that's a variable that you've got to account for. It's called longevity risk, mm -hmm. and it's one of the biggest risks the federal government wor often uh, worries about is us living too long. Now, why is the government worried about that? Because if you run out of money, then they're going to have to pay for you, whether yep. it's Medicaid or something like that. So yep. income in retirement is one way you're going to distribute the money. Uh, unforeseen medical bills is another way you're going to do it. Yep. Uh, money for family and kids and things like that, where that happens a lot, right? Oh, yeah. uh, and then uh, fun and travel. If you want to take vacations, things of that nature, you know, we talk with most of our clients, and it's actually a funny conversation we have when we talk about investments and things like that. Oftentimes they say, well, you know, my monthly income is so and so amount, but really the idea is we, you saved this money over your entire life. The idea here is to spend it, right? The idea here is we want to use this money in retirement and use it for those specific goals. Yeah, and if you don't take the trip, I guarantee you, your kids will. <laughs> so spending money for fun money, and then maybe, what about long-term care costs, yep. right? If you yep. may have to go into a facility, that can cost five to 8,000 a month or more. Mm -hmm. Where's that gonna come from? Well, probably from your savings. So a lot of ways to distribute the money. But the takeaway is, you move from the accumulation phase to the distribution phase. Now you're gonna be distributing money, so the investments strategies need to be tailored based on how you plan to spend the money. Exactly. You will invest differently if the plan is to never touch it and pass it on to your kids than you will if the plan is to take $2,000 out a month, right? So different strategies based on different distributions. So you'll basically have a bucket strategy, ideally, mm -hmm. for different ways you're gonna use the money. Very different than the accumulation phase. Yeah, and it's important for everyone to know there is no one size fits all. Right, Dave, when we're That's talking true. about this distribution phase, everyone's goals, to your point, are going to be very different. Everyone's situation is going to be very different. Yes, we, so each of our clients have a different plan. Yeah. But what is the same? is a systematic process you can walk exactly. through to identify the variables, and that's what we would encourage everyone to do, identify the variables so that you can build out a plan that's in your best interest. That's probably how I would do it. So I think that's, that 
nails it in a nutshell, wouldn't you say? 